Hi, thanks for joining me for another Cricut tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make this fun multicolored shaker card. This is super easy with the Cricut Explorer and Cricut Design Space, and I'm also featuring the new Cricut Deluxe papers. If you haven't tried these, you need to try them. They're a lot of fun, they're double sided, and I made this entire card with three sheets of paper uh, one sheet of white Cricut cardstock and two sheets of the Deluxe paper. So let's hop over to Cricut Design Space and get started. So here we are in Design Space 3. We are going to click on New Project. You're going to go to Shapes. You're going to select a square. Okay, we're going to grab this square. We're going to unlock Keep Proportions right here, and that's going to allow us to change the width and the height separately. So we're going to unlock that by clicking on it. Then we're going to go up here to the size and in the width we're going to put 4.25 and in the height we're going to put 5.5. Now let's click on that square over here in the layers panel. You're going to click on it and we're going to turn that yellow. Great. Now we're going to, while the square is still selected, click right up here in the upper right corner and click duplicate. That's going to make us another square exactly like that one. We're going to change this one to pink. So let's click on it in the layers panel and choose pink. Great. Now obviously you can change these colors to whatever matches your paper scheme. I use the new Cricut Deluxe paper and that's the colors that worked for me. So the next thing we're going to do is click shapes again and grab another square. We're going to take this square and we're going to unlock the cute proportions again. And we're going to change the width to 3.25 and the height to 0.5. Great. We can leave that the color it is. And we're going to duplicate this one, two, three, four times so that we have a total of five. Now we're going to move our square over just a little bit and we're just going to kind of arrange these first two so that they're about in the same place, same distance from the top of the card. And actually it'll be easier if we put this up here in the very top corner. There we go. And now we can count down two squares from the top and count up two squares from the bottom. One, two from the bottom, one, two from the top. Okay, now we can move this out of our way. Let's select all of these. And we're going to go to Align, Center Horizontally, and then Align, Distribute Vertically. And that has perfectly spaced those stripes on top of our square. Okay, now we want to slice those stripes out of this square, but everybody knows you can only slice two layers at a time and we have four and I don't want to have to reline every one of these up. So the easiest way to do this is to select all of these squares or rectangles. They're all selected in the layers panel. Look over here. We've got one, two, three, four, five layers selected. And what we can do now is click weld. And even though these aren't touching, they have now become one layer. So we can now Take this layer and this layer. Let's select them both. Click, oops, I'm sorry, click Align, Center. Now they're both selected. We only have two layers selected. So now we have the option to slice. And now we sliced all of these out of there at once. So we can delete those. So now you're left with just this and this. We're going to select this one that we have just sliced and we're going to go over to the layers panel and we're going to duplicate that. Now we're going to change that one to white. And we're going to duplicate it one, two, three times so that we have a total of four white ones, one pink one, and this one. Now what's going to happen is we're going to glue these right on top of here. And this one's going to be the very top of the card. 
Now, if you want to cut your acetate out with the Cricut, you can. I just cut mine by hand, but you just need it to go just over the holes. So if you wanna cut it with the Cricut, go back to shapes, go back to square, unlock key proportions, and what I would do is just drag this over so it's just barely over. You need enough that you can glue it on. So we have enough that we can glue around the edges there. So mine is 3.639 by 4.778 if you want to key that in up here. So if you want to, that's going to be your acetate piece. Like I said, I just cut mine by hand, but that is perfectly fine if you wanna do that with the Cricut. Okay, we need one other thing here. I'm going to go to images. And under images, I'm going to click or type in circle. And you can use any of these you want. You could get a fancy one with the scalloped edges or you can get plain ones or stitched ones, whatever looks good to you. I would wanted to keep it simple since I want the focus to be on the shaker part. So I used this one right here, which is from Ribbons and Rosettes, item M41A5F. And we're just going to click on that and click Insert Images. Great. Now we know that this is going to center right on here. So you just need to resize this however looks good to you. That looks good to me. Mine's at 2.25 by 2.23. I don't know how that's possible since it's a circle, but that's what it is. All right, now you can change the colors of your background if you want. The paper that I'm using, the Cricut Deluxe paper, is double-sided paper, and I'm going to use one side for one part of the card and the other side for the other. So I know that this back circle is going to be a different color, so I'm going to ungroup so that I can change just one item, and I'm going to grab that yellow circle. And you can make this the same as the pink if you're using the double-sided paper because the side that I'm going to use is just the pink side turned over. It's the opposite side of the paper. Or if you want to make it a totally different color, that's up to you. It depends on what matches your paper. I'm going to pick this green one and I'm going to change that to the yellow color because it is the opposite side of this paper. And actually, I think I ended up using it on the same side. All right, we need one more thing for this, and that is our hello. So we're going to click text, and we're going to type hello. And I just typed it in lowercase. And then we're going to go up to our fonts. And I used a font called Brush Script. Should come right up as soon as you type brush. It's right here. There we go. And we need to hook these letters together. So to do that, first we're going to try the letter spacing. We're just going to click on the down arrow and try to scoot these letters together until they start to touch. And it looks like the H-E-L is going to touch before the L-O. So my letter spacing is at 0.1 right here. And let's go one more and see what that looks like. That looks a little better. My letter spacing is at zero. But my problem is the L and the O are still not connected. So we go up here to advanced and we hit ungroup to letters. And what this is going to allow us to do is click on that L and then just using my right arrow key, I'm gonna scoot that over so that it's touching the other L. And then I'm gonna do the same with the O. Make sure they're all touching and they are. So I'm gonna select that whole word then I'm going to go over here and click Weld, and that's going to melt all of those letters into one piece. It's one layer right here, and it's not going to cut in between the individual letters. Now we just need to size this to fit on our circle. And that looks good to me. Okay, and that looks great. Now you could stop here, but I wanted to do something a little more fun with the hello to jazz that up just a little bit. So what I did and again, this is optional, is I duplicated this so that I had a total of five. One, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, so I'm going to cut the hello out in black cardstock. I'm going to cut the white pieces out of the Cricut white cardstock. And the colored pieces I'm going to cut out with the new Cricut Deluxe paper, as you'll see in the next step when we put this together. Okay, I wanted to show you the paper that I used from Cricut. This is linked in the comments below this video. It's the new deluxe paper, and the great thing about it is it is double-sided. You can see the two pieces of paper that I used here, and I used both sides, the green, the yellow, and the striped. Also, on the front of this paper is some clear acetate. You can use this for your shaker. You just have to carefully peel it off right here at the seam, and that'll work perfectly for your shaker if it's big enough for you. Okay, so here we have all of our pieces that we cut out. Here are the two pieces I cut that we can flip over and use whichever way we want. We have our striped front piece. We have our acetate, which I hand cut mine, but you can cut it with the Cricut. We have our back solid piece, and then we have our four cutout pieces, and our five hellos that we've cut out in black cardstock. The first thing we're going to do is take the white pieces and we're just going to lay this down and glue one on top of the other. I'm going to slip a piece of red cardstock under here so that you can better see what I'm doing. You do want to get solid coverage, but you don't want to go overboard on the glue. Although on this part, it doesn't matter quite so much if you have glue seeping out of the edges. But just make sure that you have it completely covered and you're just going to continue to glue one on top of the other. And then once I place one on top, I just use my Cricut scraper and just lightly go over the top of it just to make sure that glue is totally spread out and sealed around the frame. And so we're going to I'm going to speed this up while I glue the rest of these together. Just make sure after each layer that you Either take a brayer or a book or just something and really push hard and make sure your layers are totally adhered together. Next, we're going to take our stack of five frames and we're going to put it on the solid pattern piece that we cut out. We're just going to glue that down just like we've glued the frames together. We're just gonna put some glue on the back and glue that to our frame. Just line that up, and again, you want to make sure that you use your scraper or a brayer and make sure that it is you have solid coverage of adhesive. And make sure everything is lined up really well. Okay, you're going to set that aside and let that dry a little bit. We're going to take our cover piece and we're going to flip it over so the side that you want facing out is face down and you're just going to apply a little bit of adhesive but make sure you stick close to the edges because remember our transparency is not quite as wide as the outside of the card so you just want to make sure you have all those edges sealed with adhesive but close to the cutout marks and then you're going to take your transparency and place that right on top And again, I'm going to make sure that the adhesive is smoothed out and totally solid inside that piece of paper. Now I'm turning my paper that I was working on over, and if you're working on your desktop, you might want to put a piece of paper down so that you don't get adhesive on that transparency when you turn it over. And it looks something like this when it's done. Now's the fun part. We're going to take our base piece that's dried just a little bit and we're going to add some sequins and you can do whatever you like and you can see I filled mine up with each section having a different color you want to make sure that if you used any seed beads or that your sequins nothing is above the level of the cutout and nothing is on the white strips in between so make sure that's perfectly clean And then you're just going to apply adhesive to the top of this. 
and I'm just clearing off those seed beads that rolled on the top. You're going to apply your adhesive on top of this. Once you have the adhesive all across the front part, you're going to put the front cover on with the acetate side down. Now this is where you want to really make sure it's lined up and make sure that you have the glue very well adhered. My suggestion would be at this point to put a heavy book over it and set it aside while you complete the rest of the card. Once that's dried, you're going to take a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock, cut it in half at four and a quarter and fold it in half. That's going to give you two card bases. We just need one. And we're going to apply adhesive to the front. And I'm just using a Basil Marathon tape runner. And we're going to apply our shaker element to the front of the card. And so there you have the base of the shaker card. Now you could just leave it just like this. I think it's adorable just like that. But I am going to use these circles and you have a couple choices. You can flip them over since this is double sided cardstock. And I'm going to go with the pink and the yellow. So I'm going to use some foam adhesive and apply the two circles with a piece of adhesive between both. And I'm going to pop up this second one the same way. And then we have a place for our hello sentiment. It's going to set right on the middle of this. I'm going to bring back this piece of scrap paper here so that I can glue on top of this. And we are going to stack these hellos just like we did the white pieces. We're going to apply adhesive to the top and just stack one on top of the other. I'm going to fast forward through this. You can skip this step if you like and just use one layer of black cardstock that says hello. You don't have to do this part. I do think it adds a lot to the center of the card. You want to use a nice tacky glue. This is Scotch Quick Dry Tacky Glue. And you just want to make sure that each layer is lined up before you add the next. And I'm just stacking them one on top of the other. Okay, once we have those completed, you want to clean it up, make sure there's no more glue, and that's going to set in the middle of our card just like that. Now you can adhere that right now just like that if you want, but let's step it up one more notch. And I'm going to take some Versamark ink. This is a tacky ink pad, it's adhesive. And I'm going to put the hello face down right in the ink pad. Make sure that it's nice and covered. Then I'm just going to pick it up with some tweezers. And I'm going to add it to some embossing powder. This is clear embossing powder. Now embossing powder usually comes in a jar. I just have mine in this dish. So you just want to cover the front side of the hello with the powder. I find it easiest to do with the tweezers. But if you're using it from a jar, you can just put it on a piece of paper and pour it right over the top. And then you're going to take a heat gun and heat the hello, heat the embossing powder until it melts. And you'll see it start to turn glossy. Now I'm going to leave this on real time, even though it takes a couple seconds, just so that you can see how it transforms. And it's really, it's kind of hard to show it on camera but it's really shiny. It kind of makes it look like an acrylic piece. There, you can see it as I turn it in the light a little bit. But you just want to put the heat on it until it melts and you can't see the crystals anymore. And here you can see the finished effect. It's nice and thick. It has this glossy finish on it. And we're just going to glue that to the front of our circle. Now you can go straight, you can go angled, whatever looks good to you. And I'm just using the same quick dry tacky glue on the back. You want to use a little bit more than normal just to make sure that this stays down really well. Uh, multi matte medium might be a better choice or glossy accents. But this is what I have handy. So that's what I'm going to use. 
And I'm just going to finish the card off by adding some little dabs of glue and putting a few sequins on the outside of the card, just randomly placed. And here's our finished shaker card. Isn't that fun? I think these would be great birthday cards. And here's a close-up shot of that hello. So you can see how that glossy really adds a little bit more to the card. I've also added a little black clothespin with a little piece of Baker's twine tied into a bow. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Here are some other videos that you might find interesting and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.